Hello, everybody, and welcome back again to Vector Club Weekly, the number one podcast based around vectoring cartoon ponies. I think that's a fair assumption to make, right? We're the number one podcast around that? I'd say so. I mean, if and somebody can point out another podcast based around vectoring cartoon ponies, then uh, I will give you a dollar. <laughs> I, could, I could use a dollar. I'll, I'll do some research into that. <laughs> okay, so... This week, uh, we have a little special guest. Uh, last week, we mentioned the fact that Flutter Guy would not be able to make it this week. He's on vacation off in Ireland. magical lands of, I don't know, let's say he's off in Equestria. Ireland. Australia. Maybe Australia. Uh, and so we have a special guest this week. Uh, please welcome Sir Something. Would you like to pronounce your name, please? <laughs> Hello. My name is Sir Sirtex. I still like Sizzatix. I think everyone here has a different pronunciation for your name. I'd still stick with Sir Crix because it's one syllable shorter. Nah, Sizzatix. <laughs> so uh, we really appreciate you being on this week because uh, we were missing someone. Um, but first, we want to ask you four questions. And these are the same four questions that we all answered uh, in the very first episode. So who are you? What do you do at Vector Club? How long have you been vectoring? And probably the most important question... Best pony. Well, I'm Sir Sirtix. I'm banning Sir Scissortix. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes sense. I'm a vector inspector at the Vector Club, and I've been vectoring since about November, December. At least that's what it said on my DeviantArt profile. And best pony is currently rarity. Used to be Fluttershy. No, see, that's where you're wrong. <laughs> I was going to say nice. it really surprised me that it was rarity, but then again, your all your icons are spikes, so I guess that kind of makes sense, right? Yeah, I guess so. In other news, as of May 31st, it was My Little Pinky Dash's birthday. Yay. And we had... <laughs> yeah, happy birthday, bud. <laughs> Yay. We had originally recorded this and gave him a super awesome gift that Rainbow Plasma Flutter Guy and I had made for him of ROCs, giving him a birthday cake and wishing him happy birthday. But the magical birthday boy happened to not record any of his audio or reaction from his <laughs> initial surprise when we recorded everything. And it was a good reaction podcast. Yeah, it, this is the second time trying to record this podcast because uh, birthday boy over here uh, totally messed up his audio. Sorry, guys. I was just too excited. Pressed the wrong button. <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> The world will never know your amazing reaction to a present, but we will, and we're glad that you appreciate it. It was an adorable reaction. <laughs> I, th I, th I think I squeed once, <laughs> twice, three times, <laughs> three times. Okay. Um. Okay. Well, yeah. I just want to say it was pretty awesome. I also want to say that all of you guys who left me comments on my on my page and people who sent me notes and things and made me presents, because it wasn't just these guys here, but you're all you're all incredible. Um. Timmy Fuba made one for me as well. He's, um, it's, uh, Fusro Dashi. It's also in the Vector Club group gallery. It's, you know, Pinkie Pie going nuts at Rainbow Dash. Which that was is adorable. Pretty cool. I loved it. Um, there's also going to be on my profile page a folder of just all the birthday things that people have made for me. It's just going to be cycling through them. I'm going to set that up because there's too much awesome stuff to not do that. Okay. Now, while I'm talking, I'm going to go on to the next thing, which is the background project. We are currently doing the third and fourth background project. Um, the first and second ones are done. They should be up by the time this is, and links are in the description. There is also a account set up purely for the background project, which is MLP Vector Collabs. Um, that's where the finished ones go up. You can check progress and things on there as well. Everything's going to be going on to there, as well as the journal posts, which will keep coming up as well. Um, Unfortunately, I'm not actually in it, because I made one for the second one, and then somebody else beat me to it, so his got in and not mine, and so I didn't actually get a chance, but it did teach me how to use Inkscape, which I'm currently making a background in, like a wallpaper background in. It's actually working, which I'm amazed at, because I'm so used to Photoshop and everything else, just, I hate, it makes me rage, but it's working, and I'm happy, and thank you, Burn, for being on the receiving end of many of my explosions. It went through hell to make the. <laughs> yeah, yes. went through hell to make the first little bit. 
I was going to say, I can't believe that you're actually using Inkscape because you ranted so much about how you don't like it ever since I you know, came Illustrator to Photoshop. Illustrator is, is where I just draw the line. I'm not touching Illustrator again for a while. Oh, okay. <laughs> but Inkscape? Yeah, yeah. I've actually got backup Ooh. this week. Sir Surtix uses Illustrator. I'm finally somebody else on this <laughs> podcast uses Illustrator. Okay, well, it's definitely a lot of fun to see Pinky Dash rage in his live stream. <laughs> yeah, so it, it was um, it was interesting to say the least. But yeah, check out the links in the description to the MLP Vector Club collabs and the background projects which are currently happening. And I believe they're going to be ongoing because they seem to be very popular. So I, they, they they should keep going. I don't see why they won't. Awesome stuff. I think it might be a summer project because uh, we do have a lot of those um, those episode ones. But it's winter now. But yeah, okay, fine. It's winter <laughs> in Australia, but I think it's a in between season kind of thing. It's cold and rainy here, <laughs> but back, but cold is you know fifteen degrees. All right. So this week we have a new feature artist. As always, um, we have someone by the name of Alexander O2. It's actually spelled Alex Four N D E R O Two, um, and he does a lot of uh, really awesome original style. Uh, we always point out the fact that our group is very much so about show accurate vectors for people to use in videos or wallpapers or whatever. It's, it, that's what our group's for, show accurate stuff. But we also love to see people who do great show accurate stuff also kind of branch out into more artistic styles. And that's something that I've seen Alexander O2 do a lot. For example, and the first one I want to highlight was something called Hang In There Scoots. And I know, Burned, you're actually a big fan of this vector. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of this vector, and I'm also a huge fan of the artist that um, he chose to vect over his sketch. The sketch artist, um, Joey Darkmeat, is just awesome and does tons of awesome stuff and kind of keeps his own original little sketch style. And this is from um, a sketch of his where Scootaloo's hanging on a wire and Rainbow Dash is coming to save her. And um, it's re- all, all of his sketch vectors are always really well done, and vectoring a sketch a lot of times isn't easy. Yeah, and he d- he does a really, really good job with it. I'm just gonna go ahead and say I love this guy. I've, I've seen, I've been like watching his stuff come up. For some reason, I just realized I wasn't actually watching him, but I've seen a lot of his stuff come up everywhere, and it's I've, I've always just, like loved his stuff. Uh, he's also got uh, another one, which is probably one of the first ones uh, I've ever seen. I, d- I don't remember when I saw this, but I saw the original sketch for this one. It's called uh, Octavia. Oh, give me a break! And I remember seeing that sketch. That was one of the first things uh, I saw when I started vectoring. Um, so that was a pretty cool thing. It's got some great shadow work, and I know shadows especially are really, really difficult for vectoring, so he does an awesome job there. And finally, because, uh, you know, it's not just all about original style, he also does a fantastic job with this Twilight Sparkle picture. Uh, it's from the wedding episode when she's down in the, uh, uh, underground area, and she's looking at the reflection in the crystals. And he, he's done an absolutely fantastic job here with the glow from the horn, the shadows, the the uh, blur effects, the crossfades, that kind of stuff. All of it just looks absolutely fantastic. And the colors are all correct for the scene. Yeah, it it just looks amazing. So this guy can do everything. He can do original style really well, and he can do some pretty awesome show accurate stuff. So definitely go check him out. Yeah, do that. And uh, I just wanted to point out that uh, we mention this a lot, but... Always go and check out that other original style folder at the bottom of our gallery because that's always a really awesome place to go if you are looking for some original stuff. Uh, there's a lot of people like Alexander who uh, post almost exclusively just to that folder, and it's a really cool place to kind of like show off your artistic skill. Moving right along to the next portion of our um, podcast here, um, also being one of the more popular things that people have been leaving a lot of comments on and leaving us a lot of feedback on is uh, the vector critiques. So first up on our vector critique is by a user of, uh, how, how am I pronouncing this, Millennium Illidan? Millennium Illidan? Uh, that's, that's a tough one. Millennium Illidan. Anyway, um, and yes. his uh, bemused derpy vector. Yeah, so uh, I thought because we've got Sir here as a special guest, um, we would give him first crack. So, sir, do you see anything in this vector that would be a little bit off? Jumps out at you. Um, okay, the first thing that jumped out at me was right next to the um, Derpy's right eye, which would be on our left. There's a tiny fill error poking out from the side of the head. I'm going to be perfectly honest. What? I didn't even notice that. There was like three or four things that I have on my list to talk about, Wow. Underneath the eye or on the outside of the head? Uh, on the outside of the head. Oh my right goodness, that eye. is so minuscule. 
and also there's another one right at the end of the mouth line. Both of those are, yeah, they're really small. But Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, so I didn't even catch those. I'm just looking at others. All right, then. <laughs> Impressive. Well, there you go. You got a couple of fill errors right by the face. That's so the that's kind of thing point. I see. The other big one I always like to point out is uh, the ear tip. It's got the two paths right there, and uh, the, the tip of the paths, and they're, it's pointed when it needs to be round. Huh. Yeah, it's a pretty common error. Um, what program is this? Uh, I'm not sure what program we used. I think it's Inkscape. Yeah. Um, some other things. Uh, looks like in the bottom part of her mane, there's a square stroke uh, where it comes up, because you use the stroke stroke on path method. Right where it comes up, there's a little square stroke at the end of there. Um, to fix things like that, if you're using uh, just a stroke on a path, you can turn up the miter limit on that point, and then it will spit out a little point there, and you can play with it. Although when... Um... When doing that, you can get some excessively long points. Yes. So if you just like play with the handles a little, make the curves a little less intense, L- less extreme, it works too. All right. Well, I'm going to bite the bullet here and do the uh, do the perspective issue because there is a um, a weird perspective that you're doing for Derby's face. And when you gave this to us, you asked for a critique and you said, "I don't know what looks wrong here." And I can tell you from like a proportional standpoint, the face is very uh, strange looking. Uh, and the only reason I came up with a reason for why it looks so strange and it's a bit difficult to explain. So I'm going to just explain how the show does faces. Um, there's three different poses that you'll see from, uh, pony faces in the show, you know, just normally you have the side shot, like completely looking sideways, the front shot looking right at the camera, and then what we call a three quarter shot. And the three quarter shot is where you can see both of the pony's eyes, but like the eye in the back is kind of like like really squished so it's like half cut off yeah the black outline of the eye connects to the side stroke of the head and then the eyelashes you can only see poking out of the outside of the stroke yeah so it it, it it's kind of that's why it looks like it's 3 quarters of the way turned so that's why we call it the 3 quarter shot the problem with this one is that i looked at it and it looks kind of like um a half shot like, it's a shot that's not used in the show. It's almost like the pony's head is turned half of the way. Well, yeah, if you look at the eyes, the eyes are almost at, like, a three-quarter shot. But then her her right eye um, isn't can, isn't um, half cut off by that side cut of her face. And then if you look at her nose, her nose is almost at a half shot, where it's poking out the side. Um, it's not a really good comparison, but I'm looking at Sir Crix's um, um, DeviantArt icon, and if you... Look at um, Spike's nose; um, it's towards the closer to the inside of her face. Right. Uh, I think I think the biggest thing is just getting the right head angle. And I I know from experience looking at this one, you did this off of a sketch, so it's a little bit hard to get right. But I think you should use a reference here and like turn the head and the way that the eyes go to make it into a three quarter shot. And that's where you're going to get that real show accuracy feel from it. And that's all I have to say about that. Then uh, on the eyes, um, as far as I know, <laughs> Rarity is, and then some of the ponies from the uh, spa are the only ponies who have like eye blush or color above the eyelids. And Derpy looks quite odd with um, eyeshadow on. <laughs> uh, and then the other thing is her eyelashes are pointed like Rarity's or Pinkie Pie's or Twilight's. When uh, Derpy has oval eyelashes like Rainbow Dash does, and they just come straight out. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Um, those eyelashes are definitely like the reason why Rainbow Dash ha- has those kind of eyelashes is to give it less of a feminine look, and I guess they're going for the same thing with Derpy. So yeah, those oval eyelashes are a big part. Um, as well as the eyebrows. Um, normally, especially with a normal face like this, ponies don't have eyebrows. They let the eye do that, and if they do have eyebrows, they're usually straight um paths they're not they don't usually start in a point and then wave and then end in a point um i've never seen eyelashes do that kind of thing so to be show accurate you could probably just remove the eye the eye shadow and the eyebrows and add the oval eyelashes cut off the right eye a little bit and you'd probably be set and then the top of her hair is also a bit high you could also lower it to come over the top of her her right eye as well i think the main issue because he was especially asking you know, why does it look so off? Like, not from a technical standpoint. 
So again, I think you should just reevaluate how the face looks. Use a lot of show accurate uh, references because when you're using a reference from a sketch, it, it's not always perfect, and it might look better in the sketch than in a vector. One of the best things to do is take references from the show or scenes that you know from the show, and then try to use those as inspiration for things that you make. More than once, I've gone and just grabbed a quick screenshot and just used it as a comparison, especially when making um my male OC in. Pinky Dash's birthday present, um, I used um, uh, uh, Thunder Lane from his three-quarter shot from the Hurricane Fluttershy video as uh, how to do my left eye on that character. All right. Well, I think we've given you plenty of stuff to think about, so let's move on to the next one. The next one is a vector by Razor1103, and uh, it's an Applejack vector that you see up here. And again, I'm going to give first dibs to uh, Sir, and uh, you can go ahead and what do you see here? Um, at the left bottom of her front, of both of her front hooves, the stroke kind of does a little wiggle right before it gets to the bottom. I don't know if I explained mm -hmm. that very well. Yeah. But... Where it kind of just bevels out right at the bottom curve? Yeah, it should, it shouldn't do that. Be smooth. In a lot of references I've noticed, it looks like they do that, and I think how they animate hooves in the show, um, it sometimes causes animation errors like that, but I looked at the... Um, reference uh, for this because the artist included it and uh, I didn't it looked almost like it was there but it was just the when the pixels round it created the illusion like that bevels there but it should be a uh, perfectly round yeah the way they animate it in the show is the bottom of the hoof is a completely separate symbol from the top so it can rotate good to know also the um, the tail the little bit on the end I feel like those points should be pointed not rounded yeah um the the point on our most left the high point on the bottom of the tail that should be pointed and then the inside should be pointed and then on the middle one the inside point should be pointed but then the out one the outside one should be round and then the one on the last the inside part i is also pointed and then the outside is round applejack's tail is a pain that last yeah it part. works odd because it's like half half yeah like the inside points are all pointed and then the last two are round but then on her top um her top little uh, ponytail part, it's supposed to be all pointed. I'm just going to say, for a first vector, this is incredibly well done. It was so much better than mine as a first yeah. my first vector was. It's like, yeah. Um, I've been talking to Razor a bit about this, and I, I can see them going far. This this looks, as a first, this is incredible. Yeah. He mentioned that a user by the name of the Hellbean was helping him out with it, and the Hellbean's also a great vector artist. He makes all sorts of stuff all week long. I constantly see his uh, submissions. In. I'm always talking to him. He's always vectoring something. Always asking me what to vector. Yeah, this is this is definitely like probably one of the best first vectors I've seen for sure. Like w we usually when we see vectors, we either get we have two categories of how we critique stuff. We have like um, you know regular stuff that we could see pretty easily, and then we have nitpicky stuff. And I think so far, we've only been able to find nitpicky stuff on yours, so that's a that's a very good start. Yeah, I've got a few nitpicky things. Um, in the bottom little uh, fluffy part of her ponytail in her tail ponytail uh, part, there the stroke on the inside that show that it's round is poking out just barely from her hair tie, and you can see the edge of that stroke to pad. Is it just me, or do the eyes look a little bit too big? The whites? They, that's what I thought before, but I looked at the reference, and they're supposed to be like this. She's making some kind of awkward face, so she's supposed to look innocent, like, oops, kind of face, so they're purposely a little bit over large. Okay, they, they do look a little bit too big to me. Yeah, like, they are, but the show meant it to be that way. But, however, her right eye, our left, um, the ellipsises, ellipsi, whatever, um, her pupil and her iris are tilted ever so slightly to the right. When um it, it in the reference it looks odd because she's far back and it's a bit blurry, but those should be straight up and horizontal just like her her left eye, um and so uh, which causes it to look a little bit odd. Also, the uh, shines aren't quite exactly the, the the big ones aren't really the same shape. No, a little bit off. Um, for that it for those I don't I'm not sure of a good technique of how to make those exactly similar. Well, I mean, for me, I just copy paste for sure. The the eye sp I call them eye spots, the white uh, parts over the pupil. Oh, uh, I just take those and I copy paste, and then like I. I was looking at the eye accents. The oh no no the other ones. The... Shine, sorry, my bad. I, I, I call them reflections. Everybody has different words for them, but like in the eye, you have pupil, iris, 
um, what I call eye highlights, which is the two lighter colored parts, and then what I call eye spots, which are the white parts, which are essential. The eye highlights um, all have also been called eye shine. Yes. Everyone has a different name. Also, the last nitpicky thing that I have is uh, her teeth marks are, it's like a turquoise green, and it's a very hard to see. Teeth marks should be two shapes poking out in somewhat of a largest triangle, and it should be gray, basically just a desaturated white. Um, with this, the artist used um, a single shape, a single path, and then bent it and then overlapped it so you couldn't see the middle teeth mark, when that causes kind of an odd clown-like thing. But um, they, it should just be two, two, two shapes that come out of the side of the mouth that's two gray triangles um, instead of being a single shape. I'll... I'll... Put up a little. I'll put up a little comparison there because I have the I have the correct colors for the teeth, so you'll see it's much darker. All right. I think that that's good for now. Uh, I just like to reiterate that this is fantastic for a first vector. Like you don't have a lot of stuff to worry about. It's just it just comes down to keep going with practice. You're going to be a fantastic vector mm-hmm. artist. Like colors good, paths are good, everything's smooth, um, and like proportions, the paths are the same size. Um, there's no clipping errors. There's no layering errors. There's just that one in the tip of the tail, which is so minute we barely caught it. All right, so let's move on to the final section here, Q and A. Uh, we heard some people talk last week that we only had one question, and it was kind of like, well, what's the point at the very end? And I agree. So this week we're going to try to kind of go through lighter, simpler questions and get through like four or five of them. So uh, we're going to go around the table here in whatever order you guys want to go. Uh, let's start with where are you from and how old are you? So I will start off. Australia. <laughs> oh, okay. Do you want to start off, Pinky Dash? I'll start off. All right. Australia. Um, yeah, as you can probably tell with the accent, even though I'm not really that Australian sounding, according to a lot of my friends. You are Australian sounding, you weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as for the age, I'm 24. No, 23. Wait, you just had a birthday, so what are you? 23. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> I'm going to go with that. Um, I guess I'll go next. <laughs> um, I am originally from Alaska. I was born and raised in Alaska until my freshman year of high school. And then I moved schools and moved states to um, Vancouver, Washington in uh, lower 48. And then I've been living there ever since. And I am now 20. I am 20 years old as of right now. And then I'm going to be 21 as of August 7th. All right. Uh, why don't I go next? Um, I'm from Canada, more specifically uh, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I mean, Canada's kind of a big place. I'm the only Canadian on this podcast, <laughs> and uh, I'm 18 years old. I don't know why you guys keep forgetting your ages. Like, it shouldn't be that difficult. Canada, 18 years old. All right. <laughs> How about you, sir? I am from the wonderful city of San Francisco. Cali. Which, I'm sure you know which country it is. And uh, I, too, am 18 years old. Sweet. It's nice to have some youngsters on this podcast. We have all these old men. I feel so old now. Talking over me. (laughs) Whatever, youngin'. All right, so um, two more questions. Uh, What do you love about doing vectors, and what do you hate about doing vectors? Does anybody have anything off the top of their head? It's something I can contribute to the fandom. It's awesome. It's great. There's not really a whole lot else I can do. Definitely something to be able to contribute. Something that I'm good at. Something that I can do. I mean, I can't think of much else. I find it relaxing, so you can just chill. Yeah, that too. Gives me something to do, except when I'm raging at Inkscape or Illustrator, (laughs) which Burnt has been on the receiving end. Yeah. For me, it's definitely... uh, One thing that I love about doing vectors is the fact that I put in far too many hours into pony stuff. Yeah. And when I do vectors, at least I can go like, hey, look, it came out with something productive. (laughs) I'm not just watching pony music videos all day. (laughs) Yeah. That's a big thing. That's... Yeah, um, I thing I have so far come across to hate the most is learning new user interfaces like Enscape and Illustrator. Trying to le- like go to those from Photoshop has been hell for me, but having learned them, it's been great because I've been able to help out users when they have questions from cross program to program. Like me, yeah, like like me. Kidding. Although I don't ask for help, I yell for help. <laughs> I mean, I'd I'd say the most annoying thing since I'm a pretty big perfectionist and. Vectoring can be sort of a perfectionist thing when there's just this, like this one thing that's a few pixels off, and I spend like an hour trying to fix it. That gets annoying. And then you mess something else up when you try and fix it. And then you you've done so much you can't undo back far enough. 
Yeah. <laughs> I honestly, I was trying to think while you guys were talking what I hate about vectoring. I don't really hate anything about it. I mean, the reason why I do it is because I like it so much. Uh, I mean, I could list off ten reasons why I like it. It's relaxing. It's something to do to show productive. I guess the only thing that I don't really like is the fact that some like programs aren't perfect. There isn't a perfect vectoring thing. Yeah, that leads to lots of different programs, so you can try different stuff. But like, why can't we take all the best stuff from Photoshop and all the best stuff from Inkscape and all the best stuff from Illustrator and just jam it all together and have one thing made for vectoring? That's it. I think Illustrator has, or not Illustrator. I think Inkscape has the best possibilities for that kind of thing because it. I believe it is open source, correct? Yep. Yeah, so if, I mean, people are creative enough and have enough knowledge and know-how, they can go in and make different user interfaces that's Photoshop-friendly or Illustrator-friendly, and then even combine that all into something for Inkscape. Right now, Inkscape is very hard to customize. You have to have a little bit of programming and how to work text files and things like that to be able to work hotkeys and change the user interface in Inkscape. Um, But, I mean, if it was more user-friendly and had easier windows to be able to edit how you work with the program, I think it would be um, by far the best in my opinion like the user interface user interface is where i think inkscape lacks the most yeah i think so as well so piggy dash did you go over what you didn't like yes learning inkscape yes Yes. learning learning (laughs) learning inkscape is my number one thing that i hate and and illustrator in general i'm just gonna steer clear of illustrator from now on (laughs) forget that program anything except for photoshop oh no I'm, i'm actually making a wallpaper vector at the moment in inkscape and it's working out fairly well but i haven't started on the eyes yet that's probably going to be my hardest thing. Oh yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah. Hooray, clipping mess. Let's slip in. Let's slip in one more question here, uh, and so let's just run through this quickly. Um, this is. Oh, by the way, I'm dumb. Those last four questions were all from somebody. Uh, Triux four hundred four. It's T R I U X four hundred four. Thank you for sending Username in. Not found. <laughs> <laughs> he sent. He sent in like eight to ten questions like the first week so i wanted to get through some of those because they were really good like simple questions mm. so thanks for sending those in much obliged and this one's from Barry funny as in like bears and the animal Barry funny uh puns uh and the question is where is the best place uh suitable for pony pictures to vector i'm sorry that question came out horribly can i try that again <laughs> <laughs> go for it what is the best place to find suitable pictures of ponies to vector high-res screenshots just easy in my personal opinion, the best place, um, because I came from Reddit, would be if you go to um, r slash My Little Pony on on Reddit. There is a link to every episode of My Little Pony that you can stream and download and torrent and everything, and you can go to whichever um, video that you want and then find whatever screenshot you want. Finding your own screenshots in the episodes that you watch yourself, I I personally feel is the best. But I also think that My Little Pony Wiki is good, but I have never used it. I don't know if any of you guys know anything about that. Yeah, I, w- I would suggest always getting a high-res screenshot. I had another thing I was going to suggest as well last week or the week before where we did um, best uh, no, best tips for vectors starting out. Um, if you're full-on, have no idea what you're doing, find a vector that's already been made that looks easy and do that. Because it's been made before, so all all the strokes are already the right place. You don't have to look at blurry screenshots. You know where everything is going to be, and try that. Make make one or two of those, and then go find screenshots. That's definitely a good way to um, learn and being able to recreate vectors that have already been made. You get a good feel of how lines are supposed, to, how paths are supposed to look in comparison to how shapes look. How about you, um, Crix? Do you have anything that you want to add? I mean, I just say that uh, sometimes. When I watch an episode, I watch it specifically to look for things to vector, and I'll just have my hand on the screenshot key, and as I watch the episode, whenever I see something that looks interesting or any pose that's sort of out of the norm, I'll just hit that key. And so at the end of the episode, I may have like ten things, and I'll look at five of them and be like, that's terrible. And I'll delete those, and I'll put the rest in a sort of a store that I can draw from later. In reference to that, if um you if that's something that um people do and try to find common screenshots when a new, when new episodes do come out, which they probably won't for a long time, we have a um a reservation post that we usually do. Well, can I just point out that Pinky Dash, you son of a buy some apple because you took my you took my <laughs> buy some apple. 
<laughs> thing. You, you, you listed your own thing and then you took my goddamn thing. I was going to say what I do a lot of the times because I got kind of bored of doing screenshots is I take a vector that's already been done. I go to our group, I find a vector that's already been done, and then I switch the character. So if it's like a twilight vector, then I will vector over that. Like I, I won't take the vector itself. I'll vector over that, but then change it to be Applejack to give myself a little bit of a challenge and also so it's not like a straight trace. So I would recommend doing that if you're planning on um, making custom vectors. Why not just use other people's vectors and then trace over them and then change them so that they're your own? I'm just going to go ahead and say I didn't see that written anywhere and meh. <laughs> Got the ambulance. Yeah. Make sure if you do do that to uh, link the artist that you trace over. Yes. yes. Give credit. Sure. Everyone likes credit. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, that is the end of this podcast. Wow, has it already been 35 minutes already. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching again. We'd like to give a special thanks to Sir Sertix, which is now his official name because I called it. Sizzatix. <laughs> We'd like to thank you for being on. Thank you for coming in and filling in for Flutter Guy, who should be back next week. It's been a pleasure. All right, awesome. Uh, happy birthday to my little pinky dash again. Yay. You're, you're a, almost a woman. Almost. <laughs> And uh, other than that, you guys have anything else to say? Join our Steam group. There you go. Join our Steam group. As always, we look for people to send us stuff there. And you can get live feedback as well instead of having to wait for a note. More feedback, more questions. Um, I Something like that. For these first few podcasts, we've been trying to do pers- like more personal questions like Q&A. Um, if you have more technical Q&A, how to do vectors, about, about vectors, someone asked a great question about animated PNGs, which is way out of my league or animated APNGs and then animated vectors. Um, but questions like that are always awesome. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. Make sure you guys leave your questions down in the comments below. Um, make sure you leave vectors for us to critique because we're eventually going to start running out of them. We've got a couple in backup, but uh, if you send us some, we will definitely add it to the list. As always, stay awesome for reviewing this, and uh, we hope you guys enjoy it as much as we do making it. And we will see you guys next week. Bye. 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 Bye.